Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on the channel Just whatever today I have a game from one of the best players of all time Jose Raul Capablanca from Cuba He played the game against Ossip Bernstein those of you that have already seen games from Capablanca probably remember that he's known for being a very strategical, slow and incredibly accurate player, which makes him insanely hard to beat. Out of over 500 games in his career, he has only lost 36. This game I will show you is also starting off pretty slowly and strategic, but features two incredibly cool tactics. One of them is one of the most brilliant and sneakiest tactics I have ever seen in my life. Let's go right into it. Bernstein starts off with d4, and after d5, c4, and d6, we have a queen's gambit declined. They both develop their pieces naturally. I won't go into much detail here because this is just all very well known opening theory. They castle, and we have to move e3. After the knight goes here, we are in the queen's gambit declined orthodox variation. So now we have uh, rook developed and b6. Now b6 is probably already a bit of an inaccuracy, even though the computer thinks that Capablanca played almost perfectly the entire game, this does almost never get played nowadays. The reason you want to play this is obviously to develop the bishop on that square and get it on the long diagonal. The problem is nowadays we think that you should actually play c6 to reinforce your center. Now Capablanca played b6 and after takes takes, the queen is coming out to a4. Bernstein already knew that Capablanca wanted to play the bishop here. So after he did this, Bernstein played bishop to a6, immediately trying to trade off the bishop. You can't really do anything against this. You could maybe try to protect it, but I just take it anyways and now you, this rook just looks stupid. And you can't move the bishop away because this is protected by the queen. And if you move it back, I just take it anyways. So Capablanca took it. White takes back and we move the pawn to c5, trying to gain a lot of space in the center. This might have been the only slight mistake Capablanca made in this game. Even though the computer thinks that Capablanca played almost perfectly, with 98% accuracy and only 6 average centipawn loss, you could argue that this move is a slight inaccuracy. Because after black takes the knight, you have to take back with the knight, otherwise your pawn is hanging, white takes on c5. B takes C, and now you have these two pawns, and yes, they control a lot of squares, but they are also pretty weak. You can't really push them, especially not that one, because it will just take it, and it's actually getting hard to defend this. After white, for example, castles, which actually was the next move, the rook is getting into the middle, and uh, I just start attacking your pawns from all sides. Maybe not this move, maybe more like uh, this move. And it gets really hard to defend for black. So black tries to trade off the queens. Because after white takes and you take back with the pawn, this is getting more stable, which is very good for black. Now you could actually argue that black has a lot of space and the pawns aren't that weak anymore. Of course white didn't do this because white was also a very talented chess player. He moved back the queen. After this, Capablanca pushed c4 and this is a very interesting decision and I've seen actually some uh, international masters and grandmasters debate if it actually is a good move. While the computer kind of agrees with Capablanca, it does think that the queen to e6 would have been better or just develop the rook into the center. But it's still fine after uh, c4, the problem is that this square is getting pretty weak. We will see the reason why Capablanca did this in two moves. So after Capablanca pushes, white develops his rook with tempo and targets the weak pawn, black saves the pawn, and after white takes advantage of the weak d4 square, Capablanca further develops his bishop to b4. This is probably also the reason why he pushed c4 in the first place to get a more active bishop. White tries to crack open those pawns. As I said, those pawns are weak and it's the only real asset that black has. If black somehow manages to get a passer out of this, black actually has good fighting chances. If not, then these are just two weak pawns. So black further develops his pieces, and this is actually a very good example for beginners. You see, before they start chopping things off and attack aggressively, they develop all of their pieces, as you should do actually. So after pawn takes and pawn takes, this pawn is even weaker but it is a passer now. It has no pawns on the side of it. So it is way easier to get it to promote. Also, it's not that far away from promotion. 
The whole game will evolve around this pawn right now. If black manages to take the pawn, then black... Uh, if white manages to take the pawn, white is better. If black manages to push it through, then of course black is better. White plays rook to c2, trying to double up behind the passed pawn or in front of the passed pawn. We have bishop takes, rook takes and knight to d5. And if you pay attention, you might be a little bit confused because this pawn is attacked twice and only defended once. And I just said that if white manages to capture this pawn, he will probably win the game. Now, why didn't white catch the pawn? I will give you some time to think about this, why white did not just take the pawn on c4. I hope you found it. The reason why white didn't just take the free pawn is because of the sneaky knight to c3. Knight to c3 does not seem possible, but you actually can't take it because rook takes and now I'm up the exchange. And if you don't take it, then this is just a clean fork. And all of the in-between moves don't work because I take the queen with check. So this pawn actually can't be taken by white and white saw this. White just moved back the rook very calmly and thought, I will take this pawn later. Because after you push the pawn, I double up behind it. And here Capablanca starts to get really trappy with his tactics. I actually think that Capablanca saw all the way until the end of the game at this position and it, that's why he played rook to c5. On c5 the rook can actually get hit immediately by the knight. Now he moves the, the rook back to c6 and I think this shuffling was a plan by Capablanca. I actually think he saw all the way up to the end of the game. Because now white can just move back the knight. Now, you have to know, a threefold repetition would actually be pretty good for Bernstein because Capablanca at that point was one of the best players in the whole world. Capablanca moves now back to c7. And you might say, think, well, why didn't he move here to c7? It was because Capablanca saw a trap. And I think if he moved to c7 right now, Bernstein wouldn't have fallen for the trap. But all of the shuffling made Bernstein feel safe. It's like, oh, okay, he's just trying to repeat. He wants to double up uh, behind the pass pawn, but he can't really do it. So now he moves to c7, trying another square. And Bernstein here thought that Capablanca blundered. Because there is this fork, forking the rook and the pawn. You can't take the knight because of the queen and you can't get another defender in and simultaneously defend the rook. And this is actually a trap. This pawn isn't hanging. And I will give you some time twice to think about this, once in this position and if you can't figure it out, in the next position, because this is such an incredibly sneaky and cool tactic. If you found this tactic, you are an incredible chess player. I just gotta say this, because Bernstein completely missed it. Black moves the rook away. Now white takes on c5. We take, 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 take. And right now white is just up a pawn. But Capablanca saw this and played an incredible move. And I will pause the video again here just that you can search for the move because it's so beautiful. The correct move here is queen to b2 and white resigns. Now why on earth would white resign? First of all, the queen attacks the rook and the queen. Now first thought is of course I just take the queen but then there's rook to d1 checkmate. It's over. Alright, what if I don't take the queen? Well if I move the queen away trying to protect my rook, I just still take the rook. And if you take back then there's this mate in two, which is just the same mate as before. The only other square the queen can go to where he protects the rook is queen to d3. If I take the queen, I checkmate you. You can move in between with the rook, but that's mate. So here, you have to give this in-between check. Someone has to defend the check. You either go here, or here where I just take you and mate you. If you go here, now the rook is for free. The only other move that seems to save the position is rook to c2. Here you have to play queen to b1 check. If you move the queen anywhere in between, I just take the rook for free or I checkmate you. And if you move the rook in between, I just take it for free. 
Also, you have to move the queen in between and I will probably win it in the next move. So if we rewind back here, every other move is either equal or actually losing for black. The obvious move would be to check here, but after queen back, you are actually fine because black also has back rank problems. So if we rewind back even further and think about what I said here, this pawn was the only asset black had. If black gave it away on purpose, he had to see this. Why would he have started shuffling if he did not see this? Very clear, clearly, he just laid this trap out five moves in front of him for burn, 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 I was gonna put him uh, foot, foot. for Bernstein and just waited for him to take the bait and play this incredible tactic. That's already it for today from me. I really hope you enjoyed watching. If you liked the video, like the video, and please let me know in the comments if you saw the incredible tactic that Capablanca played here. I hopefully see you again in the next week with another video on chess or whatever. <laughs>